you know, in the eyes of most fans, Tekken 5 is the best game out of the series. Very good game. However, the same can't be said for some of the lore. Some things really didn't make sense. Uh, I'm going to get into that later on in this video. Like, some things are just off about the lore, whether it's people that shouldn't beat somebody else, like from Feng Wei losing to Wong, when I mean, physically Feng Wei is stronger and younger, to Raven losing to Kazuya, but beating or squaring off, going neck and neck with Ihachi? Like I said later on in this video, I'll I'll get to those details on why I think it's stupid and why this game needs to be rewritten. So anyhow, we start off directly in the intro right after um, Tekken Four when Kazuya beat beat Hihachi and Kazuya to death. His father and grandfather nearly to death and nearly laying there, and Jackson V the Hanamaru while. Kazuya and Hihachi are just waking up. Good stuff, right? So now they stand together and they fight off the Jets. Nice teamwork. Go Hihachi! Oh man can go. And then, well, Kazuya turns on him and left his father to die by the group of Jack Fours. And Kazuya flies off. They explode in his face and he actually is done. Raven is there to report it. And Raven enters the tournament to further investigate what's going on. And then we get this beautiful 2005 Smackdown-ish intro. One of the best intros of all fucking time. We got Feng Wei here training. Beautiful intro. Shows off all the characters. The Williams going at it again. Like, this is a very um, action packed intro. Very nice. All right, so we got Steve versus Lang Shao Yu. Steve enters the tournament to find the mystery of his birth. And he becomes close friends with Lei. We've seen in a previous uh, tournament. Nina, who was sent to assassinate Steve, chose to actually help him out. And because she had feelings for the fact that this is her son. So she had mixed feelings and whatnot. And Steve, of course, tackled Lay to the ground. Because Lay was taking down the syndicate and whatnot. Yeah, so that's how Lay and Steve became friends. And he's a, and Steve found out that he's a creation from Machine Zaibatsu. Shao Yu wants to turn back time. And pretty much a scam artist told her that if she won enough money, she can turn back time. Cause Ling Sha Yu, she's just naive like that. That's her, that's her thing. She wants to turn back time because she wants to get close to Jen. She wants to undo the trauma that happened between the Mishimas and Jen, who she's so in love with. 
Yada yada yada. You know the you know the whole deal. Stevens ranked pretty low in this game. Shaw use a solid mid tier. She's um unlike in the last game where she jobbed out too. That was a good match though. You know, losing to Craig Marta, but she beat Steve here. But she however, um Yoshimitsu has warned her about the dangers of this tournament once again, and she dropped out. Now, while this tournament was happening and Shaoyu dropped out, she learned that Jin was after the Jin was after his father and grandfather to kill them. So she tried to rush back she tried to track down Jen, you know, tried to rush back into the tournament to track him down and stop Jen from doing what he's about to do. But the guards stopped her from doing so. So this was the last of Ling Shayu that we've seen in second five. So after returning from the tournament, Steve has decided to he gained access to the Mishima Zaibatsu cloning center, I mean control room. And he's breaking the portals of this control room, creating these monsters, because he's making sure they will never make another monster like him. And he burns the place down. Good job, Steve. Steve is fighting for humanity. I very much appreciate that. So anyhow, we got Lee versus Julia. Now Lee didn't really, Lee didn't really care for this tournament because I guess he was after Kazuya, but he found out that Kazuya wasn't even in control of this tournament. I guess he assumed that Kazuya won the fourth tournament and had control over the Mishima's Ibatsu. But, you know, I guess he didn't know what, what went down at the end of the fourth tournament. Julia enters the tournament so she can gain the funds to save the world's forest. Nice ending. Like I said, Lee didn't really care for this tournament anyway, so... Julia gets the victory, she beats him. But he, he really could care less. Lee goes back to the Bahamas, you could imagine, and went back to living his easy life. So there's that. Julia advances in the tournament. So Dr. Boskanovich helped a, a, a dying Brian and installed the generator in Brian's body to make him more powerful. And Brian's thanks was killing the comrades inside of Mishima Zaibatsu vault and possibly injuring or killing Dr. Boskanovich as well. It, it never said that, so I don't know. Maybe he wasn't there at the time when, when Brian attack the people inside of the vault. So, Yoshimitsu is making Brian pay for it. This was a very close match. Both of these guys are evenly ranked. Beautiful. Yes, this, this was very e evenly matched. Um, plus, it's a story battle. And that doesn't happen often when I'm rewriting these tournaments as well, so. So, close match, but Yoshimitsu wins by timeout.
Now, despite beating Brian, because Yoshimitsu was a slightly higher in the book, in the booklet, than Brian, so Yoshimitsu, even though they're both low tier, Brian always had a crappy tiering, a crappy tier as far as the booklets went, outside of Tekken 3. Yoshi was starting to have problems with his sword. So his sword was weakening or whatever. So Yoshi had to basically do something about that. Long story short, he got a Fumikin, mix it with some evil blood or whatever, who know, whatever, some voodoo shit, who cares, who knows. But it was affecting Yoshimitsu's ability to fight effectively. So he was able to stop Brian. But afterwards, his sword had issues. So Yoshi didn't get too far in this tournament. So Marduk is now a super villain in this game. Um, after King stopped himself from killing him, he attacked King outside of the fourth tournament attacked Marduk because I'm not going to have them fight that I don't think King's ranking was too low in second four in a booklet and he lost to martial law because of that but law failed to revive his career in the fourth tournament so and he got into a fight as you saw and martial law's the ending in the previous game. You know, some assholes in his restaurant and Marshall China were acting up and cu cussing in his restaurant and martial law dragging the uppercut, uppercutted the shit out the guy. <laughs> and it led to a fight. And martial law was, uh, he went out of business as he was, he could not, he could no longer work there for doing what he did. So he was pretty much making probably like less than minimum wage dishwashing thanks to that. Meanwhile, he has the amount of metal, medical bills to pay because his doofus son, Forrest, got himself riding around, you know, injured himself riding around on Paul Phoenix's motorcycle. So Forest Law is all types of banged up from from his freak accident. So Martial Law is trying to win money from this tournament. And well he's as you can imagine Martial Law, he, he's a solid mid tier, but we know he he's not gonna beat Craig Martin. That, that's that's a guarantee. He's not beating Craig Martin. So um, Marduk knocks him out, and he doesn't win the tournament. And Martial Law, Martial Law tried to tried to flee to America with, I guess, some money he did get from the tournament. That's how we're gonna book this his storyline. And this happens. Martial Law just was just didn't win a tournament. Kicked out of America because he didn't belong there. He got deported, and here comes Paul, a tired Paul, sending him his son's medical bills to pay. And Martial Law is broke, and he's like, "Fuck, I'm not paying that. <laughs> I can't pay it." Like, do I look like I have three hundred and forty-five fucking thousand dollars on me? Are you kidding me? So I'll drag an uppercut once again, just like the previous tournament. 
So, yeah. So we got Hoang versus King here. And Hoang basically got arrested, you know, near the end of the fourth tournament after he fought Jen in the parking lot. To complete his service and he did complete his military service and Beck was working as an embassy in the military so Beck got him out and they both entered the King of Iron Fist Tournament 5 so soon as so soon as Hoang was ready to be released get me out of here now and he or he is fighting Kang. And also, this is no. Well, this is one of those things that really needs to be rewritten. Hawang making it to fight Jen and beating Jen. No, 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 no. I had a better. I had better plans for um, Jen in this tournament. Now, I do. I did still have it written down or and recorded that Double Jen did attack Hawang. But um, it wasn't after him getting defeated by Hawang. Kang, of course, is getting revenge because Craig Bardock was taunting his master that he killed, Armor Kang. So, oh, beautiful. So this was a pretty okay match, but Hawang is mid-tier, ranking in the booklet. So, yeah, he's not... He's not the right guy to defeat Jen. And he's not defeating King as well. So, the third tournament was when Ho Wang was booked really strong. He was one of the strongest guys as far as the booklet. So, he was ranked high. So, yeah. He was pretty, he was pretty neck and neck with Jen in the third tournament, but... After that, Hoang has been nerfed in the booklet. So, yeah. So basically, every game through from Tekken 1 to Tekken 5 had booklets and they introduced the characters. And the winner would be the first guy you see. Whether it's Kazuya, whether it's Jen, whoever. Kihachi... And then next you would get Paul, he would, who would be the second strongest. And then it just keeps going lower and lower from there. So that's how I came up with these rankings. So in case you don't know what I mean by low tier, mid tier ranking, I'm not going by how OP a character is in the game. Because if we were going by that, Steve would win this fucking tournament. Hands down. So, yeah. I just want to clear that up in case you're you're new to this channel or you're you're new to how I rank the characters and how I put together the matches. Now we got Feng Wei versus Christie. So Feng Wei became the top student in his dojo by age twenty. Now that's impressive. That's impressive. So uh, Feng Wei is a beast, okay? This guy is strong. He is tough. He's 26 years old. He is in his prime. And they were going to make this guy lose to a, a, in a 105-year-old. Yeah, Wong is... Yeah, Wong is tough. He's strong. He knows martial arts. We know that. We know Wong is not some bum out in the street. He's not some old bum. But do y'all really think it's believable? For Wong to beat this man? Are you kidding me? Dude, Feng Wei is a beast, bro. Christy is trying to win enough funds in the tournament so she can find a cure for her grandfather. And we know, um, just like um, if it was Wong, Christy loses. Feng Wei beats her. Good match though. Christy is pretty strong. Christy and Eddie have been always ranked pretty much the same. 
pretty much low top tier or at least solid mid tier. I would say I would say Christy and Eddie are always been top tier. Just not S tier. So yeah, um, Fang Wei beats Christy. And that last shot gave her an orgasm, as you can, um, as you just heard. So, Chrissy loses the tournament, but I guess um, Eddie pleaded with Jen, who won the tournament, afterwards to um, help him cure his grandfather. So they meet the grand, they meet Chrissy's grandfather, Eddie's master, at the hospital. And Jen, Jen kept his word. As he said in Tekken 6, he kept his word. So, Grandpa's okay. For, for now, for now. Because we're all going to fucking die someday. But, <laughs> not to be insensitive, but just saying. Sorry, Eddie. Oh well, at least you saw him here. Alright, we got Roger Jr. versus Anna. This was a nothing match, but this was a really good match. Um, definitely one of my favorite personal matches that I've done. Roger Jr., the one tucked in Mama's pouch, enters the tournament to save Daddy Roger, who was abducted one day from the Mishima Zaibatsu sometime after the second tournament. And of course enters the tournament because she wants to beat her sister and end their rivalry once and for all because they couldn't kill each other after trying to blow each other up with fucking missiles and shit. Very good. Nice. Anna gets the victory. Anna's ranked a little bit higher. Really that just means she's not in the booklet but she's unlocked a little bit after Roger Jr. is unlocked so she's higher ranked. So, Roger Jr. loses the tournament. But, but, Roger Jr. still was able to sneak into the lab and find Daddy. So, I guess these animals are very smart. Because how would you know where to look? Kicks the door down. And look what daddy's doing. Yeah, look what daddy's doing. Daddy's watching the King of Iron for Tournament 3. Yeah, daddy. Daddy's sitting having a beer, smoking a cigarette, and enjoying the third tournament. Oh, my son. Oh, you don't love me no more, son. So. So we got Bruce versus Kuma here. Bruce wound up at a survival school. And I forgot, it didn't did it tell you how he wound up there? Uh, some of the writing, I don't know, is a little bit off. I gotta admit. Like I said, the game is great. It's just that some of the storytelling is kind of bad and Kuma wants to gain control of the Mishima Zaibatsu since Ihachi is allegedly dead so he goes to the bad neighborhood that Bruce grew up in and you got these grown ass men at least they look like grown ass men to me bullying and beating up this little boy who's just training the box in a, you know, in some alleyway. Why? I get it's a bad neighborhood, but with this, is this even realistic? So anyhow, Bruce is there to so fight off the punks. Go 
Because Bruce is the inspiration of children, even though he works for Kazuya. Which is odd. So this is basically, basically like a better version of his ending in the second tournament. To where he's training and the kid and a kid is a fan. Alright, for one thing, it seems as though Bruce doesn't really know Kazuya that well. He just works for him. Because if Kazuya, if, if Bruce really knew Kazuya, you think a guy like Bruce would work for a guy like Kazuya? I'm sure I'm not the only one asking that question. That is off, because Kazuya, I mean, Bruce is seemingly not a bad guy. So, there's that. That's just odd, but anyhow, so after returning from the fifth tournament, Bruce goes to work for Kazuya, because he, he's already worked with Kazuya before. Helping Kazuya take over the world hmm like I said um is is Bruce good or bad he works for bad people but he has good morals I guess Bruce is in it just for the money you know what I mean Bruce is here to get piss aid that's all get that money Bruce I don't blame you so Nina never gets to fight her sister because anybody can face anybody in a, in, in a real actual tournament. You know, you don't know who you're going to fight. So, so, you know, what I'm doing is more realistic. But anyhow, Nina's still in the tournament. She's doing well. Jen is, of course, doing well, as you could expect. He already squashed his Mid-tier for God knows what fucking reason Kazuya earlier in this tournament. Which makes no sense. So these two have a very close match because Nina is Nina's back on her grind. She's she's suffered from low tier low tier godism. <laughs> you know, the last couple tournaments. And now fifth tournament she's near the front of the book again she's top tier again so yeah she gave Jen a hard time so I know a lot of people um, weren't happy about Ling Xiaoyu beating Nina in the Tekken blood what is it called whatever that 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 Netflix movie the bloodline series I, but yes, even in second three, the booklet, Nina was nerfed. They said that Nina was not as strong in second three. And she certainly cannot beat Jen. Jen advances in the tournament and Nia, and now Nina is out. So yeah, Nina was weakened by the cryo sleep she suffered from on the third tournament, she lost a lot of her memory. So she wasn't as effective in the third tournament. I just thought I'd point that out because some people are like, why would Ling Shaw you be Nina? She knows how Kato, she knows how to break body parts, she can chain throw and all that. And she's she's an assassin. Yeah, but like I said, Nina was not at her best on the third tournament. And look at the way she was fighting. I mean, even look at my video of her versus King in second three. They gave her, they gave her a lot of cheap shit. Where she started doing low blows. Um, spitting poison mist. Like... You know, she started fighting dirtier. Because it's like... You know, maybe that's maybe that's the developers showing us that she kind of couldn't do what she used to do after suffering from the cryo sleep and being used as an experiment for ogre and whatnot. So yeah, uh, I just thought I'd touch on that a little bit to to help fans understand why Nina lost the way she did.
So Marduk versus King. Um, basically, um, I was I was glad to be able to do this match because anybody can face anybody. But I was able to get Marduk versus King to face each other. Unlike with Nina and Anna. And uh, this was a very good match. Uh, very close. As far as the booklet is concerned. And unlike in the fourth tournament. Where Marduk was. Top tier. And Kang is booked as somebody who's low tier. King. Won this match. Because yes. King is higher up. King is more. Is higher up in the rankings. Than Marduk. Not by much. They're both top tier in this game. Both of them are pretty high up in the booklet. But Kang is actually higher. This wasn't me trying to be canon. Kang was supposed to win this. So after this grueling match, I guess Marduk did change his ways because Marduk decided, you know, Marduk, he took the loss like a man. And I appreciate that. I mean, after all, the, you know, because Marduk was definitely being booked as a villain. So this was a face turn for Marduk. And they squashed their beef right there after that fight. However, after this happened, off camera, Marduk was attacked by allegedly Armor King, who we later found out it was Armor King's brother, who is also Armor King. So, the new Armor King laid out Marduk after um, King left the scene and... Um, so I guess um, Armor King, who's not in the original game, was I guess probably um, watching Marduk, spying on him, waiting to the waiting for the perfect time to take Marduk out to get revenge for for his brother, who Marduk killed. Makes sense. It would have been nice if that was a cutscene, and then. You know, in the game after this, and then you get Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. And I guess, see, this is why they had to make, this is why they needed to make Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection right here because of stuff like this. It's like, it's like they wanted to add a lot to, to the lore in this game. They wanted to add a lot of lore, but they didn't have all the characters for it. That's why they, they had to add, add Lily. They needed to add Armor, Cra Armor King's brother and Dragonoff for some reason. But Dragonoff, in my opinion, is a great addition to Tekken. I guess to give Raven a uh, another rivalry. Makes sense. Okay. Now see, in my opinion, this is how Fingway should have lost the tournament. Not to no old ass, 105 year old, one old fart red. He should have lost to somebody who's, who, 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 is, who looks credible against him. Somebody who's young and strong like him. And I mean, Raven had every right to make it to the end of this tournament. He had every fucking right. He's at the front of the book. He is the coolest new character in, so far in the series. You know, at this point. I mean, he's, he's fucking Wesley Snipes, you know, off Blade. You, you, this, this guy, you can't make this guy lose like a pussy. Like what they try to do. I mean, I mean this, this guy is... This, this, 
He's Wesley Snipe. He, he's Blade. And on, on top of that, okay, that's not reasonable enough for you. Okay, how about the fact that he was investigating this entire tournament and they made him lose to Kazuya just to come back and fight Hihachi and beat Hihachi's ass or at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Dude, if, 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 if Kazuya could beat your ass, Hihachi could beat your ass, bro. Like I said, inconsistent writing. What I had to fix that shit. What, what the fuck? And also, I made Feng Wei lose in, in, a, in a competent way because he lost by by a timeout in this match. Because, like I said, Feng Wei is very strong. You 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 don't just beat Feng Wei, bro. Both of these guys deserve this five-star match. They deserve to make it far in the tournament. So, Kuma is still in the tournament. We're in the late stages of the, of the King of Virus Tournament 5. And we got Kuma versus Jen. Kuma is still in the tournament. And he did lose this match, but he... Did not lose to Paul like how they made it. Because Paul has been getting... Well, at least Tekken 5 is when Paul really started getting... Actually, ever since Tekken 3, Paul has been like in the middle of the book. He's been kind of like lower mid-tier-ish. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and of course, his storyline in Tekken 3 did not, did not make sense. That's why they fixed it in that Tekken Bloodline Netflix film. Because that made no fucking sense. For Paul to make it that far, then how come he didn't fight Jen in Tekken 3? But anyhow, um, Kuma's going to lose. Kuma's going to have to lose to Jen here. And this was a very good match. But of course, Jen is still stronger. And yes, if, if I did end up putting Kuma against Paul, Kuma would have won. It wouldn't have been No, fuck that. Kuma would have beaten Paul. Kuma's a late unlockable that makes him a top tier. In my book. So as you oh ouch. So as usual. Jen is collecting bodies, beating everybody like he did back in second three. Now, instead of Hihachi fighting Jack Five, we're gonna have we ended up with Raven versus Jack Five. Now this is a match that would make perfect sense after we seen Raven kill one of the Jacks. After those, after the Jacks kill Hihachi, supposedly. But we're gonna see Hihachi, so I left out. I made sure I left out Hihachi and saved Hihachi for the end of the tournament because Hihachi was um he was out throughout the duration of this tournament. So we don't see Hihachi till the end. And of course, uh, Jack Five, uh, yeah, Jack Five's not beating Raven. This is this, this is how Raven should have been booked. He should have been progressing through, progressing through the tournament, all the way up until he made it to Hihachi, and then he beats Hihachi, and then he loses at the end. And Mocha Jen is strong in this game. He's late to unlock, so he's more powerful than ever. But still, he's not beating Jen. Didn't really care for this match because it's Mocha Jen, but 
still. Mugerton is somehow still fun to watch. So, now that everybody else is defeated in the tournament, now we now bring, we back, now bring back Rihachi. Now we now bring, we in bring, Rihachi bring in Rihachi to Rihachi fight. Rihachi. To fight. Like it should have been near the end of the tournament, where Raven has pretty much made it past everybody else in the tournament. Everybody else is defeated at this point. Jen is defeated now. He defeated Jen. <laughs> Yeah, this is how Raven should have been booked. Because Raven is te technically kind of like a main, he's almost like a, a protagonist. We were all getting answers through Raven in his tournament because of his investigation. Because this match, this match is canon. So. They have a very good match. And Raven gets the victory right here. Now we know who's running the tournament. Well, I mean, it's not that, not like we didn't already know. I mean, because we already Tekken Five been already came out twenty years ago. But what I mean is, we now know through the story that it's confirmed that it's Gene Pachi running the tournament. I mean, because other than Wang Jinrei, who knew? Have Raven get through the tournament, all make it all the way to the end. Hihachi comes back from the dead to find out who started this ridiculous tournament, as he has stated in his own words. But Hihachi didn't even know who started the tournament because Hihachi was knocked unconscious for weeks. So now we got some answers here. So we'll, we'll, we'll have Raven beat Hihachi. And then Raven's boss, which is not Master Raven, as you can hear, <laughs> tells him that you have to take down Gene Pachi. But we're not going to have Raven fight Gene Pachi just yet because he's got to make it through Devil Jin. Jin in his devil form. Hmm. Good luck with that one, Raven. So, Raven was un was unable to defeat Devil Jen, which is still Jen. So that means Jen has a second chance. So with Jen's second chance, he got to face the boss, Gene Pachi. His great grandfather beats his great grandfather. And now, Jen is in control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. Not to mention, he already attacked Hoang. So, Hoang is injured before the events of the sixth tournament. But that's besides the point. The point is, Jen is now in control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. And Raven should have been the one to make it all the way to the end and lose instead of Ho Wong. So, this is me rewriting Tekken 5, folks. You can tell me what you think of this rewritten story. 
Do you think it makes more sense for a Raven to make it all the way to the end and face Hihachi and beat him? And him, and him being the one getting all the answers? Because that is canon as well. Or do you think that mid-tier mid Hawang should have beaten Jen and then Jen transforms to his devil form? And then, you know, enters Hawaii. Because then that would mean, because no matter which story you choose, either way, Jen went back to his regular form to defeat his great grandfather. I just think there, there were a lot of inconsistencies with the story. It makes no sense that Raven. Gets his ass beat by Kazuya, but then he can go toe to toe with Hihachi. And they put Kazuya in the middle of the book, like like he's a mid tier character. He's fucking Kazuya. So. But I guess what does make sense is. Jen getting a second chance being the boss because he does have the double gene. And this in this game is the first time you actually get to play as double gen. But if you play Raven's story in this game, after you beat Hihachi, he goes straight to Gene Pachi. And double gen plays no part. Makes no sense. Because the reason why Jen won this tournament in the first place, whether he lost to Raven or Hoang, if it wasn't for the double gene, Jen would not have won this tournament. Either way, it doesn't matter who would have beaten him. It's just the fact that Jen, without his double gene, would not... Yeah, he, he would have beaten... Gene Pachi as he did, which makes this also kind of weird to me, because Gene Pachi is, is treated in this game like he's a, is a very powerful demon who could beat anybody in the game, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying that either way, if it wasn't for the double Gen, Gen in his regular form would have lost this tournament. You can say, ah, oh, he didn't care about facing Huang. He just wanted to get it over with. So, you know, he, he kind of half-assed his fight with Huang. Okay, either way. Either way. But it's still a loss, which means he was eliminated from the tournament. He used the double gene to stop himself from being eliminated from losing the tournament. That's what I'm getting at. So that's the, uh, this is me rewriting Tekken 5, folks. This is Home Tech. Peace out.